Hi folks, Andy here from Andy McSweeney Photography and Photo Tour Bruges. Hope you're all um, hope you're all doing well, gang. I don't know if you've uh, you've heard the news over the last few days. I think a lot of you have, based on the reaction online. But um, in case you haven't, I guess it's it's up to me to break it to you that um, Fidel, the dog who sat by the window over the canal on his pillow and quickly became the most photographed dog in Bruges. I mean, he was in the In Bruges movie with Colin Farrell in the first couple of minutes. He's been in a Dumont commercial, so he's not only photographed, but a film and TV star. Well, gang, uh, sadly, Fidel passed away last week at the grand old age of 12. Uh, the cancer sadly got the best of him before his uh, birthday in May. So that that sucks. You know, a lot of us who lived here in Bruges, a lot of us who visited Bruges had um, had a special play to, place in our heart for him, especially seeing by the online comments. You know, I'm seeing a lot of uh, sad faces, tears, condolence wishes, memories being shared. So this dog really meant a lot to a lot of people. You know, I mean, personally speaking, as someone who's lived in Bruges for over 13 years now, quite steadily, he was one of the things I'd pass when I went through town all the time, sitting at his window, doing his thing, uh, just enjoying the sun or taking in life. So personally, you know, I really, I really enjoyed seeing him. It was uh, one of the little visual highlights of the city. One of the things that made me think, oh, how wonderful is it to live here? How, um, how sort of unique is this place? Um, and then in the same respect, with my work as Photo Tour Bruges, he uh, he was a really great part of it because he was part of the 10 a.m. tour where we go around the edges. Uh, we'd stop by his window fairly quick into the tour and people would just smile big time, grab their photos. I'd share out the photos that I had picked up of him. And, um, you know, it was just you could see there was a lot of joy to uh, stopping by old Fidel. So, you know, I wanted to send out this video just to the rest of you who are uh, feeling what I'm feeling, which is that really sucks um, and isn't the most joyous thing to hear. And then at the same time as, I don't know, a little bit of a, memo a memorial to him, uh, I thought I'd just throw out this little tutorial of what I would share out when we stopped by Fidel's Photo Tour Bruges. I picked up some good photos over the ages. I think uh, some of the advice I shared out was useful towards uh, better photography. And as I say, it's just a bit of a remembrance to him. Um, I'm just going to dip into those photos now and we'll talk about them for a little while, hopefully towards getting you some better photos. All right. So let me skip into photo mode. Okay, guys, let's um, dive into it. So if you look at this shot, before we get into photos of Fidel himself, let's just um, dissect the scene a little bit, get an idea of the location we're dealing with here. So this shot, I think, is a very typical illustration of Bruges. You've got all these nice little houses. You've got a, a canal. In this case, you've got a boat on the canal. And uh, nicely squeezed in there in the corner is that little bridge. So, um, you know, that's an idea of the scene surrounding where Fidel lives. As far as where Fidel actually sat himself, if you look at the left of the frame, we've got this little overhang to the canal on the building. And if you look at those windows, he's not home right now, unless that's that little white bump of him in the shadows. But essentially, that was Fidel's home. Uh, so you can imagine, especially with the boats passing by, he was a uh, pretty noticeable and big hit to the place. You know, this location isn't far at all from the center, about a uh, three minute walk from the fish market or the Berg Square to give you an idea. Now, as far as where most of the shots are taken, you know, obviously, if you're taking a boat tour and he's out there, you're going to go for a shot. At least I hope you are. But large majority of people were shooting from the other side of the canal. So if you look at the bottom right corner of the frame, you can see a little bit of the barrier right there. And there is a gap in the barrier, so you can actually go down a few steps to the base of the canal. But I found a lot of people were just standing up here and uh, grabbing the shots they need to grab. So a little bit of distance involved. Obviously, a bit of zoom is uh, useful in this kind of case, but not always mandatory, as we're going to see. But before we jump into Fidel himself, that's the actual location that we're going to be dealing with. All right, so let's hop in. There's our boy, giving it blue steel. Hey, buddy, hope you're uh, hope you're sleeping well. 
Okay, so as you can see visually, I think I have an interesting story going on. You know, dog sitting at the window, whether I can see the canal or not, he's, um, he's fairly engaging. Now, for this first shot, I went in fairly tight with the composition. You can see I didn't worry about the canal surrounding him. I didn't even really worry about the house that he was housed in. I just got in there nice and close and got a, a clean, intimate feeling of the dog himself. Okay, now let me just demonstrate how that works. We're looking at this shot. Imagine, or don't even imagine, take a look at how I click and he just jumps right up there. Now, with this shot, I've got a nice level of intimacy. But if I get in really close, that's where I start feeling, you know, the heart of the dog. Um, it is something to say for, like, simplicity, clarity. A lot of people are only going to give your photos a couple of seconds before they uh, decide whether they've seen the photo or not, or at least the story. So I generally tend to encourage not just tight shots, but a nice simplicity and clarity to your photography. If I want to tell the dog of, uh, if I want to tell the story of a dog at the window, I probably want to get that in fairly quick and directly. I don't want too wide a shot like that last shot, where even if he was sitting at the window, in this case, he might get lost to the overall scene. So nice, to nice tight, close. That gets me dog at the window nice and quick towards my viewer. Okay. Now, opening it up a little bit and also showing him on a different day, a little more passive doing his work. Um, we're dealing with, again, just a nice closed in shot. I didn't quite go as close as before. Also, as you might have noticed, compared to the last photo, the windows have actually changed. Now, about two years ago, they decided to change out the windows here, um, just from that old green glass into something a little more modern and cozy to keep the, uh, the office space that's behind there nice and warm. Now, that also meant Fidel at a nice warm warm cozy spot but as you can see obviously on a sunny morning he wasn't complaining if he was getting outside so you know this shot sort of riffs on the last shot where i'm going in nice close tight i don't have to worry about the canal story i mean the dog at the window sells itself as far as the story i want to tell so i'm basically just trying to you know do that shot justice. In this case, I also didn't go as tight as before because then I can work in a little more brickwork, which I think has um, texture and character. If you look up top, there's some wintry vines doing their thing, and I think that adds to the story. Um, it's not the worst, you know? I think uh, getting a little sense of scene does give just a little more character to the story you're trying to tell. So don't be afraid of those tight shots, but make sure they're not too tight. You want to make, you want to get somewhat a sense of scene into uh, even the closest photos you've taken. Okay. All right. Into the next shot. Look at that. It gets a little more active, as you can see. I'm still doing very close crop uh, shots. So again, very intimate, very simple, straight to the point. In this case now, Fidel's jumped up because, well, Basically, after 12 years of being on that spot and being the center of attention, um, when other dogs pass by, he would get a little bit territorial and uh, sit up, bark, tell them off, tell them to uh, keep moving along. It was one of the things I really loved about him. Um, but, you know, as far as what's going on in this scene, it could look like he's just sniffing in the morning air, and that would be uh, a fair interpretation. But in this case, he's actually getting a little hyper because one of the neighbor's dogs is uh, being walked out. Also, as you can see in this scene, Molly comes into play. That's his uh, cohort in crime. She was a, she's a real sweetheart, too. But, you know, they'd often be found both sitting at the window, even though he was the more, more prominent feature. And as you can see in this shot, I found it added a nice little bit of character, so obviously happy to include her there. Now, as far as the shot and what you might want to look out for, the main thing I'd think about here, guys, is the fact that there's reflections going on. You know, obviously we don't have to deal with it with the open window where Fidel's on, and even the middle window, because it's got two shutters closed, the reflections are minimized. You can see I made it into the shot a little bit with my pale wintry skin there. Uh, you know, that's hidden well in the frame, so I don't think it's taking over a bit. I would think about that red that shows up because it is a little bit distracting. Red tends to catch the eye rather aggressively. So, you know, that's something to consider with the reflections. And then when you get into the third panel of the, of the frame, you can see there's like a white shutter from the opposite house that's starting to play in.
Now, if you don't want those elements to show up as prominently, you're going to want to think about a polarizing filter. That's that shaded glass that you um, pop over your lens. As you turn it, you see reflections come and go away. That's certainly something to consider. I recommend you invest as much as you can on that one because I find the cheap ones are like cheap sunglasses and they can kind of work against you in some cases. But more than anything else, you know, you just want to keep an eye on those elements and uh, work around them best you can. One thing I would consider on this on this particular shot, even if I did have a polarizing filter, because I think, especially with the white shutter, it's still going to show up, is I'm going to move around and make sure that that white shutter isn't disturbing other elements in my frame. For example, if I was standing a little more upright, I'd actually have uh, that shutter go into the top of Molly's head, which obviously doesn't help towards the clarity, towards the um, simplicity I'm reaching for. So I always take a look at all the elements in play and try and sort of slot them into place as, as best I can. You know, the practical way of thinking about that too be, is um, just simply moving around. You know, it could be a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, a little bit standing on your tippy toes, a little bit crouching down. Uh, you know, in another way, aside from the shutter, if you look at the corner of the frame or that window where I'm just mousing over, there's a little bit of car in there. Now, luckily, it didn't take over the frame too much or pop into Molly, but, you know, that's the sort of thing that I'm crouching down a little bit to make the car minimized. So as long as you can put all those elements together, don't be afraid to just play around, sway a little bit and see where you can get that sweet spot for the shot. Okay? Okay. Next shot. All right. Different day, similar light, opening up the scene a little bit. In this case, basically, I got the dog at the window a few times over, or at least to my satisfaction. So, you know, this is where it's worth an extra minute of my time and a couple more frames on the uh, memory card just to just to discover the scene a little bit more. You know, open up. Try variations on the story that you're seeing. Bring in other elements. In this case, I brought in this window over on the left side of the frame. You know, I'm quite fortunate in this one, too. Fidel's looking right at the camera. He's giving me the whole blue steel slash magnum look all over again. So that's certainly something that uh, appeals about this shot. In another way, too, I want to think about the lighting. Even though I'm opening up the frame, he's very well lit and prominent because of that lighting. So that's something I'm going to think about when I'm choosing out my photos or even framing up in the first place. In fact, if you look at the second shot, it's another variation here of just playing with the surrounding scene. In this case, obviously, this guy doing the cleaning in his green pants is pretty appealing towards the story I want to tell. You can see also I've got that nice lighting around Fidel, so he's still very prominent in the scene, even though he's towards the right side where he might not be noticed directly. But more importantly, whoops, you can see I'm just trying to get nice variations on the scene. In this case also, with this fella in the corner, this starts falling into street photography, which is basically just a riff on journalism, in case you don't know it. It's where you start grabbing, you know, life as it goes around the streets, um, just try and get a feeling for the people and doing their things. Sometimes it's intimate, sometimes it's confrontational, doing street portraits. Um, but it's something worth reaching for, I find, because, I mean, what's a place without its people? So if you get these kind of shots and there's a dog in the window on top of it, it's certainly not going to help this, uh, not going to hurt the story you're trying to tell. So those are all elements you want to play with. You can also notice in this shot, I didn't actually get the canal at the bottom. I made sure to get the end of these blue buoys. Um, but in this case, I found opening up the composition even more, bringing in the canal ended up being a little bit distracting. So I ended up rolling with this shot. Okay. All right. Hey, look at that. That's how popular the boy was. So again, just working the scene, trying to get varieties around uh, what I saw after the dog in the window. In this case also, you know, I'd worked the dog, I'd worked the dog at the window, I'd worked the surroundings of the window. At that point, if I was feeling sort of stuck or just out of ideas, obviously I roam around with the camera looking through and just seeing what composition, what stories, what sort of things are going on towards catching my interest and maybe a couple shots. But more than anything else, gang, if you don't see those next moments or those next opportunities when you're looking through the camera and sort of working it that way, maybe just try putting down the camera for five minutes. 
You know, we can get lost looking through the lens. We can get lost thinking about lighting composition, buttons, settings, all that sort of stuff. So, you know, it doesn't really hurt to put down the camera at least for two minutes, look around, watch life going go by, have a little bit of patience if you have to. But, um, you know, that could lead to opportunities like this where you just start seeing what can come of the story. And in the same respect, guys, you know, I got this on the second boat after I noticed this type of story composition, what have you. But it didn't mean that after that second boat, I stopped and just packed up, even though I felt I had what I had. You never know. Somebody else might pass by, be standing up taking a photo too, like this gentleman is, who's obviously catching into the story. But just cover my bases. I got a winner, so why should I be a quitter? Take two more minutes. Take two more boats. That's just that many more options when you get back to the, the um, editing phase of things. Okay? Okay. And, you know, speaking of like finding shots typically not seen or the ones that go a little bit above and beyond what everybody else tends to have, don't be afraid to take a little initiative. If I get all these shots and I'm really happy with it and I even feel like it's building towards a small series because usually you only show one or two shots to your friends so you don't keep them too bored. Luckily, this is an engaging scene. I've worked enough varieties that I feel I'm not boring my friends too much. But if I want to squeeze one more in there, you know, something that really I'm pretty sure that most people don't have. Well, the little initiative like knocking on the door and saying, I see you have a really cool dog who's popular. Can I please see him and maybe give him a cuddle? Perhaps a photo? It's not going to hurt, guys. You don't know if you don't ask. In this case, you know, the, the, the owner of Fidel, Caroline, she has a bed and breakfast. She's used to people popping by the door. It's called Cote Canal, by the way. Really beautiful place. And I'm not just saying that because she's a nice lady. It's a good spot. But, uh, you know, that meant that it was rather conducive towards me knocking on the door and easily getting access towards Fidel. Um, you don't know if you don't try, guys. What can I say? Take the initiative, do that little push, and, you know, give the dog a good cuddle and a, and a thank you cookie afterwards if you get what you need. And even if you don't, he's a cool little guy. He's fun to cuddle. And by the way, I'll just say, having met him in person a few times, I used to uh, go over every now and then and bribe him with cookies so he'd care when I was at the window. Uh, he was a much less mellow dog when you actually had him there. Uh, obviously, sitting at the window was definitely nap time. Okay. Well, guys, a couple more shots, just things to think about. You know, this is um, one of the first shots I took of, took of Fidel. This is when I started the tour back in 2012. I kept passing him and I knew he'd be a, st a excuse me he'd be a stop on the tour so you know I wanted to get a really uh killer close-up shot and I feel this is one of my favorites uh for those of you who haven't heard of it too composition wise I just want to point out that this photo really does uh live and die by the rule of thirds and again for those of you who don't know it that's where you essentially break the frame into three pieces vertically and horizontally so take a look where I'm mousing over that's one third I've just mapped out then I go up here there's my second third with the window and then, of course, the third third is Fidel himself. And then if you look at going the other way on the frame, I've got one third down to him and just sort of where it's all flowing. And then in this case, I've combined the other two thirds so that they uh, fit well together. So if you haven't heard of the rule of thirds, that's just like a little base explanation, a small example, but I hope it helps you make sense of things. Some people put their their points of interest on the line of the third. I have no problem putting it inside the, the line of the third. So different strokes for different folks, but that's what that rule is and uh, where it can come in handy towards composition. All right. And uh, I guess just to leave you on one last shot, gang, I just want to show you another personal favorite. This was in the depths of winter when, uh, you know, it'd be a little too chilly for him to jump out. He was apparently really keen about sitting out there. So it wasn't just uh, someone nudging him out. He genuinely loved to be outside on his pillow. Um, that day was a little bit too chilly. I was passing by and was lucky enough to score this shot. He was looking all longing towards the window. But in a better photography kind of way, 
All right. I'm just going to point out, gang. Okay. You know how a lot of your cameras shoot JPEG, obviously, because that's the standard file format for a photo. Um, next to that, a lot of your cameras, especially once you start going up in the quality end of things, will shoot RAW. R-A-W, like raw meat. Now, that's another recording mode for a photo that basically just gives you more data inside the photo. So that means the highlights, the shadows, the color tones, all that sort of stuff just has that little bit more information. Doesn't mean that you get a bigger printing size out of things, but it does mean on certain shots where you're going to be afterwards with the editing, digging out the shadows, maybe pushing down the highlights or just tweaking it one way or another, you're going to want that raw photo just to be able to uh, explore the most of the possibilities. Now, I will say, JPEG will cover a lot of bases, so don't feel this is necessary, but there are certain situations where it does make a big difference. This particular shot, because I really had to dig into the shadows afterwards to get a good impression of Fidel, because believe me, when I shot it to get it reasonably exposed, he was um, quite hidden in the shadows. You could see about a third of his, of what we're seeing now. Well, that's where I'm glad I'd taken it on a raw camera, um, in raw mode, so that I just had the most information possible, so that I could really dig into those shadows and do a decent impression of them. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, that's what I would share out on the photo tour. Photo Tour Bruges, for those of you interested in passing through Bruges. Um, more importantly, that's Fidel. You can see he was a really funky fella. Those are just, you know, some of the photos I caught. Tell you what, let's just hit pause. I'm going to go back into uh, full screen mode out of photo mode. So, hold on. Yeah. So, um, so as I say, guys, I hope these, you know, I hope these tips help you. Um, I know Fidel was a really awesome doggy, and we're all missing him. Uh, it's been really wonderful to see online how much people have been sharing photos, commenting. Even if you go over to 500px, and I'll put a little um, link to it in the video, they actually did a tribute collection towards Fidel. So you can see all the photos, including a couple of these, that uh, people have been sharing of Fidel over there. Um, I guess just to wrap things up, I, you know, I hope this is helpful for you. This is uh, part of what I get up to is Photo Tour Bruges, and not to make this an ad, obviously, so feel free to check out Photo Tour Bruges if you want to. But more importantly, you know, I hope this was of use to you, and in the sense of um, just remembering Fidel, I hope also this was enjoyable, or whatever word uh, I guess is appropriate there for you. Um, before I go, I just want to I want to send my condolences to Caroline and Hank. They're the... Um, they were the mom and dad to Fidel. I know just like me and Mrs. Andy, they didn't have kids too. So I'm sure just like Mrs. A me and Mrs. Andy, the um, the pets were like kids. So I hope it's not too uh, too painful for you guys. You know, it's it never does get easier. And um, just know that our wishes and a lot of wishes based on the comments online um, are with you guys. A lot of sadness going on around the city and beyond. But, you know, also a lot of joy that he brought us. And I think that fundamentally is what you got to remember out of uh, all this. You know, we all, we're all just visitors on this planet at the end of the day. Not to be too cliche, but that's what the truth is. We've got a while here. Uh, some of us more than others. Some species more than others. And, you know, I guess if there's anything to leave you on, it's just... All that is very temporary uh, in the grander sense of things. So while it's here, just savor it and enjoy it and make the most out of it. That's, um, that's to me what life is for. There's certainly difficult days where it's not as easy as it should be, but there's also a lot of wonderful days where it's just so simple to embrace it and even use it towards a charge for those rougher days. So, uh, to get out of here on that because I don't want to leave it on a sad note, even though uh, I miss that dog. Um, I guess I'll say, see you later, guys. Get out there, savor that life. Get me out of years and, uh, and get shooting. All right? Good. Thanks for listening. See ya.